Hello chess fans, this is Chess to Impress with coverage from day two of the Leuven Grand Chess Tour. The second event of the 2016 Grand Chess Tour, the first one was in Paris, the second one in Belgium in Leuven, close to Brussels. This is day two, the second day of Rapid, uh, and there will be two more days of Blitz following this one, and I will have videos on those as well. After the first day, Vishwanathan Anand was in the lead and he continued where he left off on day two in the first game. This is from round six, the first round of the second day. Anand is white, Giri is black, and this is the position after queen e5 to b2. White is a pawn up, and Giri cannot take on d3 with either rook or queen, because then there is knight e5 with a fork which loses material, so Giri played knight f7. Anand, as I said, is a pawn up, he played d4, and Giri tried to activate, play something active, activate his pieces by e6, e5, sacrificing a second pawn. Anand took the pawn, and Giri played knight h5, but he went on the wrong track because now Anand played e5, e6 and it looks like he is returning a pawn but here Giri resigned because if Giri takes that pawn and he really has no choice because the pawn is forking rook and knight but if he would do that then there is rook e1 at the end and the queen cannot move away because then there's rook e8 checkmate so after e5 e6 giri resigned and anand had made a good start on day two but then anand lost two games first he lost to vladimir kramnik in round seven and then he lost to magnus carlsen in in round eight and I will show you a, a position from that game. Carlsen is white, Anand is black and this is the position after 29 knight b3 to c5. The material is equal but white's pieces are more active and white has more space to work with. According to Carlsen in the interview afterwards, he said that once Anand let his let Carlsen play his rook to d8, that was the losing mistake. And let me show you how that went. Anand played rook f to f7, Carlsen h5, and then king h7 is a blunder, positional blunder, because the rook goes to the back rank, becomes even more active. And according to Carlsen, this was the losing mistake. He felt he was winning here. And indeed, he brought the, the victory home. Let me show you the final position after knight d8, d8 takes b7. The black position is a mess. The knight is pinned. The rooks are not doing much. The rook on e8 has to cover pawn e5. The rook on f8 has to keep protecting the knight. And pawn a6 is hanging as well. So Anand had enough and he resigned here. That was three wins in a row for Magnus Carlsen. And the fourth and last round, which was the ninth round in total, the fourth and last round of the day, Carlsen played black against Vladimir Kramnik. Let's look at that one. The last round, round nine of the rapid section. Kramnik is white, Carlsen is black, and this is the position after 46 knight e3 to d5 from Carlsen. And in his interview afterwards, he said that if that he feels that this position is a draw. There is not much material left. Of course, black is a piece up, but he felt that 
this was not winnable if white does not trade the knights. If, for example, as Carlsen said, black plays knight e4, then Carlsen can play knight f4. But after king f2, he said that black will not be able to make progress. He felt this was a draw. Kramnik thought he had to trade the knights, so Kramnik took on d5, and bishop takes d5, and now black has a winning position. Kramnik played g5, Carlsen king g8, king f2, king f8, both parties are centralizing their kings. Of course black has to be careful that he doesn't go too far with his king, because the pawn on h6 is very dangerous. King e3, and now Carlsen goes bishop g8 to control the h-pawn with his bishop. King d4, and Carlsen said that both himself and Kramnik made the mental mistake here that now black would have to play bishop h7. But as he said, there is no reason to play bishop h7 and he quickly saw that king e8 actually easily wins here. And we'll see why. Kromnik played king e4 and king d7. Of course, if Kromnik had played king e5, then it would have been king e7. And black wins because white cannot go to d5. That square is covered by the bishop. So black will be able to penetrate the white position and win the pawn on g5. That's actually what happened in the game as well, even after king e4. Then Carlsen played king d7. King d3, Kramnik trying to get the opposition, trying to keep the black king out, but it will not work. King e6, king e4, yes, he has the opposition now, but only now does Carlsen play bishop h7. And after king f4, king d5, Kramnik resigned. Let me quickly show you how, why he resigned. He is not able to keep the black king out, for example, king f3, king e5, king g4, king e4, king h4, king f4, and now the white king has to let go of the pawn. And after king takes g5, the position is easily winning, the h-pawn will go as well, and Carlsen wing will bring his pawn forward to the queening square. So that was 4 out of 4 for Magnus Carlsen on day 2, and these are the standings after the rapid section. Carlsen was at the bottom, almost at the bottom of the table after day 1, but 4 wins brought him to first place by himself. Wesley So quietly rose to the top, he was the only player not to lose a single game in the rapid section. All other players lost at least 2 games, but so didn't lose any. He made seven draws and two wins and that brought him to second place. You can see the rest of the standings and the proud winner of the Paris Grand Chess Tour is still at the bottom after the rapid section. So he has a lot of catching up to do in the Blitz which will be played on the third and fourth day of this event. Hope you liked this video. If you did, I hope you will give it a thumbs up and you will subscribe to my channel. This is Chester Impress. Thank you for watching.